Hi, my name is Nathan, and today we're going to do a full comic book review of The Closet, issues number one through three, brought to you by Rated Comics. Before we begin with the content, link in description if you wish to add any of the comic books in this review, support the art, support the industry. Timestamps will be in description if you wish to go from issue to issue. And also, if you like the content we're throwing up, you know what to do. Like the video, subscribe to this channel. It'll help Rated Comics to make more comic book reviews and comic book related content like this. With all that being said, hey, let's get into the content. We begin this issue with Tom at the bar drinking while going on a supply run for the last minute packing tape for their move to Portland, Oregon. So his wife sends him on a packing run to get some tape and he stops at the bar. My God, a dude, I used to work in the moving and storage industry as a sales consultant and then a general manager for a United agency. And I can tell you that moving is one of the most stressful events that one can endure in their life. Next to going through a divorce slash breakup, whichever you want to do, but I've been through both. So Tom stops at the bar on his way to get packing tape. Not because the bar is on the way, it's more like taking the long way home. He's having problems with his wife Maggie and his son Jamie. We will start off with the wifey problems first. While preparing for their move, he tells the bartender that Maggie gets flustered and frustrated with him during their move expressing that he doesn't know where everything goes and she wants things packed exactly where she wants it. To add to their problems, Maggie found a box in the back of their hall closet that he was sharing with his girl back in the day. Let's just say his wife didn't appreciate digging up old life hiding in the corner of the closet. But we are sure that it's just scratching the surface between him and his wife's problems or their problems. The problem with Jamie is that he is dealing with is Thomas was supposed to talk to a psychologist about these nightmares that Jamie's having. So kind of taking Jamie to the psychologist to get an assessment, so to speak. Nightmares about a monster in the closet, but the young family has no idea just how bad the shadowy figure's intentions really are. But I understand that James T. IV is building the environment up in these characters first. Trust when I say this, we will get to the monster in this issue later on. Thomas doesn't take Jamie to the psychologist because it's not like, it's like, what's the point? When they move to Portland the next day, there won't be a closet, so it's like, end all be a white spend the money on it. The bartender suggests unicorn piss as a solution. Not your typical bar talk, but check this out. Unicorn piss is when the parent takes a spray bottle, fills it with water and a little bit of lavender, tells the kid to spray the, the unicorn piss under the bed and voila. No more monsters because it's like dogs marking their territory. Monsters stay away from unicorn piss. <laughs> Thomas has his doubts and the bartender's like, yo, man, I'm just a cool uncle who gets to throw the kids around and be cool and send the kid back to their parents. But that's what my sisters does. In the next panel, Thomas is on his way home. We see Jamie unpacking a box and clutching a bat version of a koala as a coping mechanism. We see the closet as he looks at the closet and then we hear the parents go into it. Jesus, Tom, really? Thomas gets back thinking he's the hero of the night. I got the tape. Well, yeah, it took you long enough and you have that smell on you, don't you? Well, you know, you, you know the, the boys will be boys, right? So Jamie's like, Daddy, and Thomas is like, yo, buddy, can I sleep with you guys tonight? And Tom is like, no, sorry, little guy. Your mother needs to stay up late to finish packing, but we're gonna be on the road trip tomorrow for our movie. You can sleep with us every night. You can sleep with me every night. You get what I'm saying? So here, wait a second. So he takes the bartender's advice of what his sister does with the unicorn piss. He has an empty spray bottle. So wife was like, what the freak are you doing? He puts water in it. This is unicorn piss, use it. And the wife was like, what the fuck are you doing? Sorry, I, like seriously, that's what the wife is like. Like, look, that's the look she's giving him. And Jamie's not buying it. He's like, you kidding me? It's just water from the sink. Yeah, but it's unicorn piss. I know, just let me show you how it works. So he goes to his room and he's like, you see that monster in the closet? The monsters don't like the smell of unicorn pee pee. So he sprays the water or the unicorn pee pee, which is actually just water that he did in front of his son instead of being some kind of discreetness to it or do it behind his back or put a little magic powder, even a hint of lavender, just something to make it feel like a unicorn pee pee. And he turns on the light like, see, nothing in your closet. It's all good. Just go back to bed, son. And even if there was something in the closet, this is the last night in our apartment because tomorrow we will start driving and you will never see this closet again. The monster can bother the next kid who moves into this room. <laughs> I see that he's trying and he's like me as a dad. You're really 
really trying, but it, half the time it doesn't hit the mark. This time it is not hitting the mark, but the other half, you know it's hitting the mark. You know what I mean? It's good intentions just gone wrong. So when he leaves thinking he's done his job, putting his son at ease, his wife is like, you can't do that, Tom. What? You made it my fault that he couldn't sleep with us? That's not fair. If he keep doing it, he's going to internalize all that and it's going to be my fault. Well, crap. Sorry. I mean, I didn't think it was. And this isn't even tape that we need for packing. This is masking tape. Oh, well, look, I, you know what, Tom's like, what can I do, bro? Like, I'm sorry. I mean, we're going to be in a wonderful house starting a whole new life together. Is it really going to matter? Let's just move on. We'll keep it moving forward. That doesn't let you off the hook, says his wife. And they go on arguing while Jamie is sleeping in the dark. Door open. He's just taking it all in. So meanwhile, he looks at the closet and he looks. And the, you could tell right here, the panel starts flickering. The light starts flickering. And he's trying to go to sleep, but he just can't. And the light flickers some more. And this creepy AF looking little monster just sits there like, yo, what's up, man? And you can see the tension and the fear in this kid's eyes. And this monster just walks up to him. Can you imagine seeing it as a 10 year old kid? Literally like, do you ever have points in your, when as a kid, I know I did, when you fall asleep and you put like a shirt and pants on your chair in your room and you go to sleep and you're half asleep and you're half awake and that chair or the, the, the shirt pants seem to come to life and materialize into some personified form? Yeah, I, I know I did. And this monster just grinning and he crawls into bed with this kid and you can see it's just sweating with fear and this monster just snarls him, creeps up on him, gets close to him, puts his teeth near his ear and then disappears and the kid's like, like what? Jaime's like, what? The closet's not even there. In between those two boxes was the closet. Now the closet's gone. He touches a wall and he drops his koala in shock. When he turns around, the now the new closet's right above his bed. And the monster gives him that look like, you think this is it? You think this is the only time? This ain't the first and it's not going to be the last, bruh. I'm coming back for you. And Jamie screams and the mom and the dad rush in. Are you all right? And this kid, when he trembles in fear, he's coming too. He knew what was happening. And Tom was like, you just had a nightmare. It's okay. You can come sleep in our bed and starting tomorrow. You'll never have to see that closet ever again. And that's where we end this issue. Personally, I kind of dug this book. And, for, and, and why? Because I'm a fan. I like James Tinian IV as a writer because I love his other books, Something is Killing the Children, which is going to be a Netflix show. So whenever I saw that he wrote this book, I wanted to pick it up. If it was a different writer or something I was not familiar with, I would have just left this book alone, personally. In my conclusion, the world is full of gruesome, tangible horrors, but sometimes a dark night can be equally terrifying. I, as an adult, would brush it off with such notions that kids saying I haven't I'm seeing things in the dark there's monsters under the bed and I did that as a kid too but as an adult I know better but what if that was really true and that could be really truly horrifying so it takes a long time to reach a turning point on the table it's a slow burn and a slow tension building horror and that's just James Tinian style and I love how Tom was de has been desensitized by his surroundings too numb to care by going to the bar while Maggie his wife cares too much about the smallest things I wonder if this monster is a symbolism of their tension and how it mounts them because it's something to kill the children the monsters are formed by the manifestations of people's minds it's an intriguing concept horror and while exploring dysfunctionality of a typical family I think it's an intriguing concept we begin this issue with Tom and his son Jamie on this road to going to their friend's house. Notice how his wife Maggie is not there with him, but that's going to be explained later. They're moving across country to Portland from New York. Why? It wasn't really explained why. It was just a big move that it just seemed Tom wanted to do or that they were going to do. So, but on their way there, they decide to camp out and stay with their friend Mac's house, our Tom's friend Mac. So he welcomes him and greets him, and we get to notice more of Tom's flaws. Remember in issue number one, when his wife Maggie sent him on a trip just to get some packing tape, right? But he came back with painter's tape, and on top of that, he went to the bar down a few beers in between, just kind of like showing a little bit of this man's flaws, and obviously not executing the delivery of the unicorn piss, right? You gotta check out issue number one for that, because without context, it's not making any sense so when they get to his friend's mac house obviously mac's like yo man i got a bedroom for your kid come on in and by the way does he have like clothes or toothbrush or something oh man like i'm in the middle of nowhere we gotta make a walmart run but tom's like you know what buddy just sleep in my shirt it's all good we're just gonna get on the road we had a long road trip just go to bed we'll get on tomorrow so inside the house they play legos they you know eat some chili tom and his friend mac do some catching up and talking and after playing legos for a minute and obviously tom and jamie catching up which their conversation is cool is really setting up the their rapport and their connection with one another and they haven't connected in a long time so they're just catching up all the time it's kind of like old friends from college old friends from high school when 
you haven't talked to each other for years, but when you talk to each other or reconnect after that time gap, you never miss a beat. You're just picking up where you're left off. It's just life, man. So Jamie gets tired, goes to bed. Tom puts to bed. And Jamie's like, I'm scared because of what happened issue number one. Turns out in the car ride, Tom yelled at his son for being scared of a freaking monster in the closet. I get it as a parent. Sometimes your kids just get you know tick you off a little bit but what if that monster was real and tom doesn't even realize that and what is the symbolism of that monster too so tom tells him hey buddy it's okay just go to bed but you promise you'll stay here with me you said you can sleep with me every night right and he's like yeah I, i'll be here i promise but it's been a long day and i haven't seen mac in a long time I'm just gonna stay out and talk to him for a little bit but i'll come back to bed you promise says jamie yeah i promise so he gives him a kiss sleep tight turns off the light and this closet whatever the freak dimension appears from just magically appears up top now the real meat potatoes of this book is tom and his friend mac conversation and it's just highlighting all of tom's flaws like you yelled at your son about a freaking monster the closet yeah the thing is back in new york we had a closet where we're going we're not gonna have a closet so he doesn't even worry about that and this move stresses me out man it's just been really messed up about all this we got a beautiful house we're doing all this i just want him to see that we're leaving all this behind in new york for a better life i don't want him to be scared of a freaking stupid monster in the closet because he remembers being scared of an old closet hundreds of miles away he can't be scared of a new closet that we're moving to now new beginnings bro and max like dude your kid is four years old they're gonna get scared of monsters that's just the way it goes man so mac asked him is this moving thing specific or you're just a freaking moving disaster well i'm a general i'm a moving disaster says tom but he says it sarcastically and mac looks at him like you're acting like i'm joking i'm not joking let me highlight it for you really man you're gonna joke about that like that really we don't talk anymore so their conversation is showing a lot more flaws with tom's character like why isn't maggie here well she needed to get there early to do her new orientation at her new agency so why aren't you there with her tom well i always want to do this move and i always want to do this road trip and she didn't want to do it with me i tried to talk her into it but she didn't listen and in theory as a dude it's a it, that sounds like a good idea to do a road trip with your family and a move you know do a little vacation explore new things together but did tom really convince her hard enough to come to this road trip with them or was this an excuse to get away from her says Matt and Tom is like dude what are you tripping about what are you alluding to like like you're really messing it up Tom you didn't try hard enough to convince her to go on this road trip not to mention your wife Maggie was a real saint how she handled that bullshit with Megan alluding to the to Tom's infidel like come on dude but let it sink in what the hell do you mean let it sink in I think you're mad Tom that she didn't leave you and it'll be easier if she left you and took Jamie with the other end of the world so you could blame her for not trying to fix things. But instead of knowing that it's on you to make things better and knowing that you don't really want to try. Come on, man. Like I say, you don't call me anymore. You're being elusive. You just want to be alone. Isolated. There's a lot of flaws with you, man. Why? I don't know. But you got your own shit to work out. And before you start picking on me on shit, you know? And the thing is, you got a smart, beautiful, forgiving wife and a sweet kid. And you got money in the bank account. You've got a good life. You got to get over yourself. Dude, you're blowing his way out of proportions this time. But there, there's a lot more dialogue to this. And I'm just going to save some meat on the bone. Now, you guys are watching this video. You guys are watches you because get to the freaking monster in the closet by now right i will that's what this book is about but also you got to understand that i think there's some parallel here with tom's you know character flaw and this monster is there some kind of symbolism or connection to that so while jamie's asleep he notices a closet door appearing up on the ceiling he opens his eyes wide scared the koalas just looking like bro what are you gonna do about it and the koala it has to be used as a sacrificial lamb because when the monster comes down from that closet in the ceiling from whatever dimension it came from he throws the koala back at the monster and the monster's like yo it's just a koala you gotta come at me with a bear or something or a kitty cat meow so Jamie runs and humor aside, Jamie runs and as a four or five year old kid, I would be freaked to freak out if I saw that shit in my room, dark and alone. Think about it when you watch that bullshit movies or those scary movies as a kid. For me, it was it. 1990s with, uh, I can't think of his name right now, but the 1990s it movie. I just cannot think of that brother's name, but that clown movie messed me up for life with clowns. And my kids want clowns at a birthday party. No, we ain't having it. We might do koala. So he runs out the house, 
bags. And you ever notice those are those dreams or nightmares that you have when you try to talk, you can't talk? That's what Jamie's going through right now. He's mute, he's blank, he can't say shit. So he covers his mouth, screams, desperation, tears at his eyes while the monster's coming back from behind him. Help me, dad, help me. And he can't do it. Tears and desperation flow through as him, as his dad and Mac continue to finish off their conversation like, dude, you are messed up POS. Tom, you know that, right? Well, get some sleep. You got a long road trip tomorrow. And just to keep you in line, I will visit you in Portland just to keep your ass in line from time to time. But back to the story. We end this issue with, yeah, we do got a long road trip tomorrow, but the monster drags Jamie back into the room as he screams and claws and begs to not go back in there alone with that monster. And that's where we end this issue. Obviously, I left some meat on the bone because there's a lot of dialogue that that I believe has parallels with this monster that I just don't want to go into because it, obviously I, I read this book because of the closet, because of the monster in the closet. And obviously it's James Tinian as a writer, which is one of my favorite indie comic book writers or indie, favorite comic book writers to go with it. So because of that, yes, I believe there's some parallels when you, at first I was like, what all this is going on? Rereading it again? Okay, there's gotta be some kind of parallels. I'm looking forward to the epic conclusion, which I believe will be epic in issue number three. So link in description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection. We begin this issue in the motel parking lot where Tom is smoking a cigarette by himself. A stranger approaches him and asks if he could bum a cigarette off of him. And he's like, yeah, here you go. So he smokes up that cigarette too. And that stranger's like, look, since there are two guys in an abandoned parking lot at a motel or something, I mean, we might as well strike up a conversation here. So what brings you in town? What's on your head? So start by talking. And Tom is like, well, dude, man, a lot is on my head, man. Well, I don't know where to start. You can start by talking. So Tom tells the story where, hey, look, me and my kid and my wife are moving out to Portland. My wife is already there. So I'm driving my kid across town, you know, just like a road trip, father and son kind of bonding. So the guy's like, yo, man, my dad took me on a trip like that when I was a little kid. We did all the little big roadside attractions, all the big ball of twine. I was bored shitless out of my mind, but I still remember this thing too. So I'm gonna tell you as a father, man, if you do this thing right, you will give your son something to remember for the rest of his life. And that's the key word, if he does his right. But as we established in the previous two issues, this brother ain't doing nothing right. And so he asked, what do you mean if I don't do it right? Well, what's wrong? Well, you know, I'm just exhausted. I really don't smoke, but I need to go outside and have an excuse because my kid won't shut up about this freaking monster. And this guy's like, monster? Yeah, my kid. He keeps seeing these monsters at, and I having nightmares about it. At first, it was just like every couple weeks, but now it's like every freaking night. So back in our apartment in New York, where he moved from, he keeps seeing his monster in his closet that comes out at night. I don't know, man. And his mom, Maggie, has been really rough on me lately, you know? Every night I let my guard down, she just goes on, she's on my shit. And if I don't let it go, and if I don't up perform up to par, she just gets on my case. So I trip over something or whatever she's not interested in. And she's just asking me questions about it. And I just want to unwind and let me be on my phone and just kill some time that way. Let me melt my mind as an adult. So he just goes off venting about the kid, the monster, his wife, being on his stuff. If he lets his guard down, doesn't even take out the trash, he gets bitched at, you know? And on, on top of that, his wife is complaining about co-workers that were at work. And he's like, yo, man, I'm just tired of hearing about the complaints, man. Same freaking deal, same every day, man. Different day, same circus, you know? So it makes all of it worse. So Tom just lets it all rip. And then he, and he continues on about his son seeing the monster and on top of that, his wife is like, well, why don't you call and get the kids some help? Like call a therapist or something. And I just didn't call. So the guy's like, well, why didn't you call? What? Yeah, why didn't you make the phone calls? Because Tom's excuse justification is because I knew we'll be moving in a few months and he wouldn't have that closet anymore to be afraid of. He, it'll be a fresh start, a fresh start. No more monsters, it'll be a fresh start. Everyone starts fresh. That's what this move is for. So in other words, instead of dealing with the situation at hand, I just rather move and the problems will take care of itself. And this guy is like, okay, so you're angry at your son for being afraid. How old is he? He's four, so the guy takes a puff of his cigarette. He's like, son, it's not my business, but I don't think this is about a monster. Huh? What do you mean it's not about a monster? Well, I know how it started. And the guy's like, well, so Tom's like, okay, well, if we're gonna have a conversation here, you want a beer? No, but I will take another cigarette. That's what you're asking. So he, Tom offers him another cigarette. So Tom tells him, this is how it started. It started when he was a stay at home dad. He was in charge of all the babysitting stuff while his wife went back to work at his job. So there was this babysitter in the park that he walked his son Jamie at. And one night he grabbed a drink with her and it became weekly drinks. It became something more. And we see a picture of this girl, uh, Megan, not Maggie. I called her Megan, but it's, it's Maggie. 
Correction, the girl he had an affair with is Megan. His wife's name is Maggie. My bad, guys. So, it was a dumb, silly thing, and it wasn't even something that he was missing in his life or whatnot. He just wanted to know, and it was good to know that someone young and beautiful still thought him as, thought of him as attractive. So, she'll make these dumb little mixtapes and write him love letters and pictures of Polaroids, and he would hide that stuff in his son's closet in the corner somewhere where his wife would never look for. And then one night, he goes in the closet to rekindle old spark while his son was in the room sleeping. We see, we go into this flashback. He goes in the closet, looks at the picture of Megan. Jamie, his son, wakes up clutching his koala bat. He opens his eyes, and you can tell by that pupil dilation, he saw something that freaked him out. And in that silhouette, from a five-year-old kid or four-year-old kid's perspective, at night, out of random, way out of left field, that would look spooky he screams his dad comes to him, consoles him hey jamie it's okay i saw a monster daddy no you didn't i did i did there was not a monster in the closet it was just a nightmare son so his wife walks in and, the, and tom's like yo it's okay our son just had a nightmare maybe he can sleep in our bed for tonight you know and the wife was like okay so in the corner of her eyes in her peripheral she sees that polaroid picture and that mixtape and that's what started it from there so it got to the point where back in present time tom is telling this stranger we had to go to see a couple's counselor i broke things off with megan and you know maggie i had to work it out with her and then maggie got this job off to the other side of the country and it seemed like a perfect way to you know start fresh give us a fresh start but when things started to cool down my son starts waking up in the middle of the night screaming and it's just like freak man it's just a stupid freaking fucking closet you know so back in new york we need to do this fresh start i know it sounds ridiculous i know it makes it sound like a piece of shit but actually tom it does make you sound like a pos you know so it feels like we're almost in the clear we're gonna have this new fresh start in portland but how can i do that if he keeps bringing that freaking monster with him even in pennsylvania at my friend's house that freaking monster was brought up and tom is just venting so the guy's like son i don't know much but i say one thing i figured out when i was a few years younger than you is that there are no such thing as fresh starts you don't you just work you don't work through a thing or remove it it just stays there metastasizing like a cancer so which is a subject i know quite a bit about if you would have asked me you would have known and tom's like yo man i'm so sorry man i was wrapped up in my own stuff yeah you were but thanks for the smoke though i'll hear someone's bull jive for a smoke and in my case i hear someone's complaining this too if you buy a brother a couple cocktails or coffee i'll take a coffee i'll hear your complaints at that so when tom goes back to the hotel he's completely oblivious to his son's problem and this monster who's choking his son out while tom is completely unaware that the monster's in the building or in the hotel or in the motel room with him and his son calls out from daddy uh, just go to bed, son. We have to leave tomorrow. And there's got to be some kind of symbolism here. If his dad is so completely unaware of the monster in the dark and that's choking his son, there's some symbolism here. So they're 10 miles out of Portland. And Tom tells his son, look, I'm sorry, buddy. We're almost there. I'm sorry. I wanted this road trip to be fun, something to remember by, but I just keep getting angry. And that's not okay, Jamie. That's not who I want to be. And I know it's up to me to make things or change things better. So in a couple minutes, you're going to see our new pretty home in Portland. And you're going to have, and you're going to make a lot of good memories there. Things are going to be different here, Jamie. I promise you that. Okay, bro. Don't make promises you can't keep. So when they pull up to the house, the mom is there and she greets him. How was the presentation, says Tom? They greet each other with the hug at least the kids sort of speak but tom doesn't seem to greet his wife with the same kind of emotion it was actually good says his wife i actually have an office huh not just a tiny room pretending to be an office no tom an office well i can't wait to see it so jamie's like do i have a room can i go upstairs and see it you know so he goes upstairs and sees it and then his wife tells him hey matt called and he said there was some trouble with jamie oh, oh no it's nothing i let the movers pack his suitcase so i didn't have all of his stuff with me it's fine he should have said anything whoa tom i already unpacked everything and there wasn't a loose suitcase oh tom realizing he shot himself in the foot and she's like how many days have you known this without calling me and she didn't really yell at him. I just added that for emotion. But you just know some emotional spark is going to get started with that. And he's like, really? This is how we're going to get started our life here? So right away, an argument ensues. And we see poor little Jamie clutching his koala bat in his room as the monster's hand emerges from the closet. And that's where we conclude this issue. To me, the closet has always been Tom's story. It is not Jamie's story. He is simultaneously the monster haunting his son and the one being haunted by the closet. And it's self-centeredness. His self-centeredness is the heart of everything happening to him and his son jamie that's what the monster's about tom is the monster within and is manifesting through jamie even a stranger he meets in the pre in the beginning of this issue ends with him knowing yo you are messed up my man and you are the monster strangling your
his son. So obviously him being oblivious to the monster strangling his son in the second in the bed of their shared hotel room perfectly encapsulates that notion. Did I enjoy this entire issue? I sure as hell did. Link in the description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection. I would like to see this adapted into a story or not a story, like a show or a film or something. Probably a show or like a short mini series. I think it'll be cool like that, especially for a Halloween special because as a kid, I could definitely relate to a monster in the closet or a monster under the bed. Don't remind me of that. No, don't judge me, okay? I'm sure you guys have that too. But with all that being said, the closet, issue number three. What you guys think of the comic book? Comment below, let me know. And also, if you like the content we're throwing up, you know what to do. Don't be shy. Don't be stingy. Here, I rate a comment to do awesome comic book reviews, comic book related content with the occasional comic book giveaway. Thanks again for watching. Until next time.